In this video, we're going to talk about how to find the missing sides in the special right triangles, the 45, 45, 90, and the 30, 60, 90. We're going to go through the 45, 45, 90 first, then we'll do the 30, 60, 90. Then I want to talk a little bit about where these side lengths come from. We can get into the theory a little bit if you're interested in that, and then we'll do some more problems at the end. So the first thing we want to talk about is the 45, 45, 90 triangle. So what you notice here is that it's an isosceles triangle, these base angles are congruent, and so that means that these two legs or these two sides that make up that right angle, they're gonna be congruent as well. So we refer to those sides as X and X, they're gonna be the same. But to get to the hypotenuse, the side that's across from the right angle, you have to take that side or that leg and multiply by the square root of two. If you're going from the hypotenuse to the leg, you're gonna to wanna to divide by the square root of two. And just a quick note, square root of two, it's about 1.4, which means that the hypotenuse is about 1.4 times longer than the leg. It's just that when we multiply by square root of two, we're getting an exact value for that hypotenuse. So let's jump into some examples, see if you can try some of these on your own as well. But for the first one, we, you can see they're giving us this 45, 45, 90 triangle, and they're giving us a leg or a side of eight. So you can see X is equal to eight, which means that A over here, this other leg must also be eight. And if we wanna find the hypotenuse, we just take the leg and we multiply by the square root of two. So side B here, the hypotenuse is gonna be eight root two. Now let's go to another example, so number two here. We've got a 45, 45, 90, and sometimes they'll denote that by showing you that these two acute angles are congruent. And that's how you know it's a 45, 45, 90. But you can see they're giving us the hypotenuse. So here what we wanna to do to get back to the leg is we're gonna to wanna to divide by the square root of two. So if we take four root two, divided by square root of two, those square root of twos cancel out and we're just left with four. And remember in a 45, 45, 90, these two legs that make up that right angle are gonna be congruent. Okay, for number three now, same thing, 45, 45, 90, they're giving us the leg as two root three, which means that this other leg over here must be two root three, since the legs are congruent. But to get to that hypotenuse, we have to multiply by the square root of two. Remember, it's about 1.4 times longer. So if we take two square root of three times square root of two, you can think of this as like one square root of two. You multiply the integers together and the square roots together. So two times one is two, square root of three times square root of two is square root of six, and that's gonna be your hypotenuse. Okay, for number four, again, we have a 45, 45, 90. They're giving us the hypotenuse now is six. We have to make our way back to the leg. So remember the hypotenuse is uh, square root of two times longer than the leg. So to go back to the leg, we have to divide by the square root of two. And we don't want that square root of two in the denominator that's considered improper. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a process called rationalizing where we multiply the numerator and denominator by square root of two. That's like multiplying by one. And so if we multiply horizontally across, we get six square root of two. Square root of two times square root of two is square root of four, which is just equal to two. And then you can see the six and the two reduce and that's giving us three square root of two. So that's gonna be this leg as well as this leg because remember the legs are congruent. Okay, last 45, 45, 90 example, a little bit more challenging. Here you can see that we've got the hypotenuse is eight root three. We wanna go back to the leg. So remember when you're going from the X root two side, the hypotenuse to the leg, we have to divide by the square root of two. So here we've got eight square root of three divided by square root of two. Just like this last problem, we didn't want the radical in the denominator, the square root of two in the denominator. So we're gonna multiply the top and bottom by square root of two. Remember you multiply the numbers together and the square roots together. So that's gonna be eight square root of six all over square root of four, which is two. The eight and the two we can reduce. Two goes into eight four times. So we get four square root of six for J and four square root of six for I, because remember the legs are congruent. Okay, now the 30, 60, 90 triangle, a little bit more challenging, but not too bad. What you wanna remember here with the 30, 60, 90 is that across from the 30 degree angle, that's gonna be the shortest side, that's the shortest leg, and we call that leg X. The one across from the 60 degree angle, that's the longer leg, that's X times the square root of three. And the one across from the 90, that's the hypotenuse, that's the longest side, that's 2x. Now, just a quick note, square root of three is about 1.7. So if you're going from the shorter leg to the longer leg, you're basically multiplying by 1.7. The only thing is that square root three is gonna give you an exact value for that leg. So the way I like to think about it, and you can think about this as well, is if you have the shorter leg, it's an easy problem. You just have to double it to get the hypotenuse or multiply by square root of three to get the longer leg. 
if they give you the hypotenuse, it's still a pretty easy problem. You just divide by two to get the shorter leg and then multiply by square root of three to get the longer leg. The tougher one sometimes is if they give you this longer leg, you're gonna to have to divide by square root of three to get back to that shorter leg and then double it to get the hypotenuse. So let's go through, uh, let's go through some examples so you can see how this works and I'll kind of explain as I go. So for number six, you can see that they're giving us a side across from that 30 degree angle. That's the shortest leg, that's four. So if I wanna to get to this side here, the hypotenuse, all I have to do is double it. See, x, 2x. So if I multiply by two, I get eight. And if I wanna to get to this uh, longer leg, I just take the shorter leg and I multiply by square root of three. So this is gonna be four square root of three. Pretty easy, right? So let's try number seven. So this one, what are they giving us? They're giving us a side across from the right angle. That's our hypotenuse. And we can see that's the 2x side. Now, sometimes what students do to kind of help themselves out a little bit is they might kind of like superimpose these variables over the triangles. They might say, oh, that's my 2x side. This is like my 1x side. This is my like x root 3 side. So then you would say, well, hmm, how do I go from 2x to 1x? Well, I'd have to divide by 2 to get 1x. So if I take 10 divided by 2, I get 5. And then if I say, well, how do I get from x to x root 3? Well, I have to multiply by square root of 3. So 5 times square root of 3 is 5 square root of 3. So that can sometimes help. After doing it a while, you just kind of know what to do. So for example, this one, they're giving us the one across from the 60 degree angle. That's our longer leg. That's our x root 3 side. So we're going to divide by the square root of 3. So this is going to be 8 square root of 3 divided by square root of 3. The square root of 3 is cancel. And you can see we're just getting 8. Once you have the short leg, that's pretty easy because you just have to then double it to get the hypotenuse. So 8 doubled is going to give us 16. Okay, for number 9 now, a little bit more challenging. They're giving us the hypotenuse, the one across from the right angle. That's our 2x side. We want to make our way back to the short leg, the 1x side, across from the 30 degree angle, which means we have to divide by 2. So this is 6 squared of 2 divided by 2. The 6 and the 2 reduce, so this is just going to come out to 3 root 2. Now we want to make our way to the longer leg. We do that by multiplying by the square root of 3. So 3 square root of 2 times square root of 3, we multiply these radicals together and we get 3 square root of 6 for this longer leg. Number 10, a little bit more challenging, they're giving us the side across from the 60 degree angle. This is the longer leg, this is 9. We want to go from that longer leg to the shorter leg and we're going to do that by dividing by the square root of 3. So what's 9 divided by the square root of 3? Well, we don't want that squared in the denominator, right? So we're going to rationalize by multiplying the numerator and denominator by square root of 3. So that's going to give us 9 square root of 3 over square root of 9, which is just 3. And then the 9 and the 3 reduce. So this is just going to come out to 3 square root of 3. Okay, now if we want to go to the hypotenuse, remember the hypotenuse is just twice the short leg. So if we multiply 3 root 3 times 2, we get 6 squared of 3. Don't make the mistake of saying 6 squared of 6. You just want to multiply the coefficients, the numbers in front together, and then you'd multiply the square roots together. So it's like multiplying like terms. And our last example, before we get into some more deeper explanation about the theory behind these two triangles, here they're giving us the shorter leg. And what we want to do is we want to go to the longer leg. So we have to multiply by the square root of 3. Square root of 3 times square root of 3 is square root of 9, which is just 3, times this 5 is going to give us 15. And if we want to go to the hypotenuse, we just have to double that shorter leg, and 5 root 3 times 2 is going to give us 10 square roots of 3. Again, remember when we multiply by 2, we're just multiplying those integers together, and not, you know, there's no square root, so the square root just comes along with it. Okay, for those of you that want to know a little bit more about, you know, why this works and where these values come from, Let's start off by looking at a square. Now we know in a square, you've got these four right angles and you have these four congruent sides. We're gonna call each of the sides X because they're all the same, right? But what we're gonna do now is we're gonna draw a diagonal like so. And we're gonna look at this triangle. Now when we draw a diagonal, that's gonna bisect this angle here. This is gonna be a 45, 45, 90 triangle. And it's kind of like if you're trying to put something in a box. Like if you've tried to put it this way, Sometimes it doesn't fit. If you try to put it this way, it doesn't fit. What do we naturally do? We put it on the diagonal because we know that diagonal is going to be longer. And in fact, we know it's about 1.4 times longer, or square root of 2 times longer. But let's see if we can understand why that is. So if we take this triangle now, let's draw it here. We've got x, x, and let's call this side c. Now, you remember your Pythagorean theorem. 
a squared plus b squared equals c squared, right? So the sum of the two legs squared equals the hypotenuse squared. So let's go ahead and uh, write that formula down. So a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Here, this is gonna be x squared plus x squared is equal to this hypotenuse squared. This comes out to 2x squared equals c squared. And if we take the square root just to get the length of c, the square root of x squared is gonna be x. Square root of two, we're just gonna, we can't really simplify that, we'll just leave it as square root of two. So that's where these values are coming from for the 45, 45, 90. The two legs are the same. Remember, because this is coming from the square where all the sides are congruent but the hypotenuse is x squared of two, and that comes from our Pythagorean theorem. Now let's jump over to the 30, 60, 90. Now we're gonna start with an equilateral triangle. Now remember, lateral means side, equal means equal, but if it's equilateral, we also know it's equiangular, and at all the angles in a triangle add up to 180, so if all these angles are equal, they must all be 60 degrees, right? Now if we drop an altitude, okay, in an isosceles triangle, an equilateral triangle is a special type of isosceles triangle, what happens is it's gonna be perpendicular to the base, meaning it forms a right angle, and it's also going to bisect the base, meaning it's gonna cut it in half. So if this whole length is two x, now this is gonna be x, and this is gonna be x. Let's take a look at this triangle right here. Let's draw it down here. So now what we're getting is we're getting uh, x, two x, this angle is 60 degrees, and this angle is gonna be 30 degrees because all the angles add up to uh, 180, but we also know that we, when we drop that altitude here, it bisect this uh, vertex angle. So now we're gonna solve for the side here. Let's just call it B, and we're gonna do our Pythagorean theorem again. A squared plus B squared equals C squared, solving for this leg. So we've got A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Uh, we're gonna say X squared plus b squared, which is this side, equals 2x, the quantity squared, right, that whole thing squared. 2x times 2x is 4x squared. And if we subtract x squared from both sides, we're gonna get b squared is equal to 3x squared. And if we take the square root of both sides to get b by itself, you can see we're getting square root of x squared is x, and we have the square root of three left over. So that tells you here that our longer leg is gonna be x squared of three. The one that's across from the 60 degree angle, that's our longer leg, x root three. One across from the 30 is the short leg x, and our hypotenuse is the longest one, two x. Okay, here's a little bit of an opportunity for you to practice on your own. So what you might wanna do is take a screenshot, see if you can solve these five problems. I kinda of mixed them up uh, randomly. See if you can do them and we'll go through them together. Now, for number 12, if I was gonna do this one on my own, one thing you'll notice is that the way that I've drawn this triangle is different than the way I explained this originally, that orientation. So I kind of rotated it, kind of changed the direction a little bit to try to make it a little bit more challenging. Now, if you have a phone or a piece of paper, you can rotate it so it's a little bit more familiar, a little bit more comfortable if you're used to seeing it in a, in a particular direction. But what I like to think about is, you know, short legs across from the 30, long legs across from the 60, hypotenuse is across from the right angle. And if you wanna use that little technique I was talking about earlier with the 2x, 1x, and x root three to kinda of guide you, you can say, well, hmm, they're giving us the 2x side. I wanna go back to the 1x side, so I have to divide by two. What's 16 divided by two? That's gonna be eight. Now to go from x to x root three, I just have to multiply by square root of three, so eight times square root of three gives us eight square root of three. For number 13, this you can see is a 45, 45, 90 triangle. Also, I rotated it a little bit to make it a little bit more challenging. And you can see they're giving us the hypotenuse. That's gonna be our x root two side. To get back to the leg, we have to divide by the square root of two. So it's gonna be 10 divided by square root of two. Remember, we don't want that square root in the denominator, so we're gonna rationalize. So 10 root two over two, and the 10 and the two reduce, so that comes out to five root two. So both of these legs, remember they're congruent, are gonna be five root two. For number 14, another 30, 60, 90, but what are they giving us here? It looks like they're giving us the one across from the 60 degree angle, that's our longer leg. That's our x root three side. I always, with the 30, 60, 90, I always wanna make my way back to the short leg. So I say, well, how do I get from x root three to x? I have to divide by square root of three. So let's see, 12 divided by square root of three. We don't want that square root of three in the denominator, so we're gonna rationalize. That gives us 12 root three over three. Notice when you multiply a square root times itself, you get that number underneath, or you can do square root of nine is three. The 12 and the three reduce, so you can see we're gonna get four root three for the short leg. Now to go from the short leg to the hypotenuse, we just have to double four root three times two gives us eight square roots of three. 
Okay, for number 15, this is another 45, 45, 90. It looks like we're get, given the leg, which means we automatically know the other leg is the same, two root five. To get to the hypotenuse though, we have to multiply by the square root of two. Remember, it's about 1.4 times longer. So if we multiply two root five times square root of two, that's gonna give us two square root of 10. You wanna multiply those square roots together. And then the last problem, uh, another 30, 60, 90. Let me see if I can finish drawing that, 30, 60, 90. Looks like we're being given the short leg, the one across from the 30 degree angle. So to get to the hypotenuse, we have to double it. So that's gonna be six square root of seven, okay? And then to go from the short leg to the longer leg, we have to multiply by the square root of three. So three square root of seven times square root of three gives us three square root of 21. And you got it. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you wanna see more examples, I'll put a video up there that you can check out for more practice, more examples with 45, 45, 90, 30, 60, 90. I look forward to helping you in the future videos. I'll talk to you soon.